Hello, it feels like all I'm doing is standing on this stage today. <laughs> um, you want to hear the good news? I be, will be here again tonight. <laughs> uh, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, Imperator Rome, uh, what the vision was and what we were doing, and uh, all the way into the far future of the project. Uh, what you're seeing here on the screen, let's check. Yeah, we have it there. This is one of the first like mock-up graphics of the game. This is what we, one, what the artist was envisioning what the game should look like. We wanted to make a game in scope that was uh, similar to Victoria 2 with all its expansion. Anyone here like Victoria 2? Yeah. Uh, we wanted to have deeper and more complex features than the EU Rome game had, which this was a sequel to. And we wanted to spend more, uh, as much development time on this as we did on EU4 and CK2. I'm using the abbreviation, and I assume everyone knows what CK2 and EU4 was here. So how did we start? Back in November 2017, I was like, I want to make a game. I've not done a game in a long time. The last game I actually uh, was working on from start to finish was EU4. And that was six years ago now since that was released. So I started coding. And we had this new engine called Jomini, which is super awesome to work in. Great work team uh, engine at Paradox. And it was really, really great fun to work on this game. And, uh, I had a prototype. I took all the EU ROM code uh, in the new engine, ported in all features, got all the functionality up, and then we're like, OK, we can make a game out of this. So I got a full team going in quarter one, 2018, last year. And then, <laughs> that, that was really fun. It's like dressing up. But damn, Henrik was much cooler today when he was in his uh, king outfit and all these choirs. I'm just looking forward, like, whatever we do next PDXCon, how can we beat what Henrik did? Uh, yeah, that was really f <laughs> uh, Yeah, uh, uh, well, PDXCon was super fun. We had a map and some of the user User interface is done, the mechanics, we could show a little thing. It was fun showing the press. And uh, some of you saw, uh, we had this little video going about showing the game there. It was cool fun. We had the core loops done from quarter one, so we could play the game constantly. What happened then? Well, this is a few pictures when me, Rod, and Fredrik Toll went to Tarragona to uh, shoot some PR movies. Uh, it was kind of fun. I'd never seen one of those things before. And it was far more fun than going to Rome again. Uh, we were adding a lot more features to the game. There was, we kept adding. The original design got expanded and expanded, like things like combat tactics and all of those cool things were added to the game. And uh, I don't know, how many here played the original EU Rome? <laughs> Yay. You notice that a lot of the mechanics originally has been changed dramatically in Imperator. So uh, that happened in the period towards the beta. And I'm one of those game directors that like, I want to add this, I want to add this. And uh, is my tech lead around here, Niels, somewhere? Did I stress you out? Probably, yes. Sorry, sorry, Niels. Sorry, all the producers. But yeah, I like adding stuff. I mean, put up mock reviews. Uh, Got more reviews for it, and it's like, yeah, this is a good game. It's going to be great. We uh, had a, had a lot of user research, and uh, we got the feedback that, oh yeah, it's, this tutorial will really teach you how to play the game. So it's, it was going fine towards speed. I was like, it was really positive. This is game is going to be kick ass. And then we had the launch. We had everything we planned in the game, and then some. It's like so many cool features we had added, and the launch was pretty much bug free. Uh, besides the stuttering, we had hardly any complaints about features worked. The reviews were good, the sales were great. And yeah, you see, it was like, well, everything should be smooth now. Like, we've done it again. We've done it another great Paradox Development Studio game. Everyone's happy? Was it? Nope. 
Nope, 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 nope. The players, they don't like it. I'm like, what happened? What happened? What happened? What did we do wrong? It's like, this was, we had included everything we promised. What happened? I'm like, do I know what, do I even know how to make games anymore? Like, oh, that was just not good. I mean, like, we were honest, we told everyone, this was what we were going to do. It was like, <sighs> but it was stable, it was confusion complete, it was expectation rally, what differed, what was it? And like, <laughs> then I came to a realization is that not everyone that buys a game reads every single development diary. Not everyone that buys a game follows every single Twitch stream. Do all of you uh, watch every stream we do and read every development diary? How many do that? Yeah, a few. So, what I should realize is that what does a PDS game stand for? What is a PDS game and what is not a PDS game? It's like it's a deep, we have deep simulation, it's a complexity, it's the rich stories, not just cool perfectly working mechanics. And people were assuming that we're going to get, and if we say in the shortcut, like, this is a game that takes things from EU4, CK2, Victoria 2. Yeah, Victoria 2 is last. Uh, if we say that, the assumption is, well, it's going to take all the great parts from CK2, all the great parts of EU4, all the great parts from Victoria and Hot and whatever. It's going to be everything. and. And it's going to be a PDS game. And uh, no, it was not a PDS game. It was a good game, but it was not a good PDS game. It was not uh, a game that the community expected from our promises. And that took a little bit to realize. I'm like, God, <laughs> that was, uh, it was a few tough weeks. So what did we do? We could have just like, oh, well, stop. But now nah, we're Paradox. We don't give up. Um, a Paradox game, my vision, I, do, I don't like talking about artistical visions and all of those things. But my vision is that when you buy a game, you should enjoy it. Of course, there's always some that's not going to enjoy it. But if you buy a game, you should enjoy it, and you should be playing it. And if you don't, it's a wrong with the game. If the majority that buys a game don't like it, that's as bad as if you have a critical crash bug. You have to change your design if the people that buy the game do not like it. So what did we do? Pompey was the first patch we released. A lot of that had started early. In, uh, before the release because of all this. Someone can explain the technical uh, difficulties of releasing a multiple platforms, how quickly you have to stop development. But we started the design for it and for just before we're releasing the game. We, we knew that the naval was weak, so our goal was, even before we saw the customer feedback, to rework the naval system. And or actually, <laughs> had something better than an original EU Room naval system. And then one of the major complaints that we've seen in the dev diaries before launch was that a lot of people didn't like that Rome only had one console. So this was something that like, OK, now we know how to solve it. We're fixing it. We're adding that one. Heritage was, because one of the first feedbacks was like, there's no difference between the countries. OK, we had something similar to national ideas to do some things. We overhauled stability mechanics and population overhauls, added more interactions, more things to do. But Pompey, while being a good patch or good update for the game, it was not addressing the core issues of why you didn't like Imperator. Kikoro, and I keep pronouncing it Kikoro because that's what the Kaiser would have wanted us to do. Um, yeah. Well, let's take a silent second for the death of mana. No more mana in my games. Hey, you can do an applause and share for that. 
I'm not going to do mana anymore in the games. It doesn't. It worked fine in EU4 in that stuff. It's not the thing we should do. Uh, that was the core thing of Kikoro at first. But then, like, we have to do something more. What more are the community requesting? Yeah, the population mechanics were, how do I put it, too crude. You basically do manual things of everything, besides being boring micromanagement busy work. It didn't create a believable world. And I don't know if anyone has seen one of the quotes that I've been using quite a lot is that we're supposed to make, that my design vision, I'm talking visions again, is to create believable worlds. And Imperator at launch was not the believable world. It was a great board game. And nothing wrong with a great board game, but uh, that's not what people expect from a PDS game. So we reworked entirely how the population system works in uh, Imperator. Like you have the pops promote the moat on themselves, they migrate, they move about, they assimilate the stuff. You can interact with it a little bit with like putting uh, specific policies to speed up things, or we had a bunch of buildings that could make certain types of cities where people quickly assimilate or so, but and that created such a different game feel. How many of you here have, have tried the kicker update? Yeah, there's a few. What do you think about the population mechanic? Was it good? Yes. I wish uh, we had come up with that from the start, but it's, it's good now. And then the citizen settlements was like our hero on the forum, Peter Nicholson, one of the greatest uh, young designers I have encountered in my career. He's come up with that great system. He and uh, Trent Tragula, they create so much great design for this game. The citizen settlements, how only some places are cities, and you build specific buildings and cities, and settlements, they just provide one thing, and it creates a cool mechanic. And then, of course, the food system, which changes everything. It's like, I just love how uh, it worked out in Kikoro. So, Kikoro was released in, we did an open beta. Um, the open beta was for a long time. Do you guys like when we do open betas for our games? Yes. I like open betas a lot, but I don't like it when it's a short time period. And you need to have a, at least a few weeks so you can address the issues. Because what's the use if you can't fix anything that, you know, by beta? Then it's just, oops, then it might be just a PR gimmick. Uh, that's not what I should say, probably. <laughs> uh, well, Kikoro had a long uh, open beta period. We got enormously great feedback from the community. Thanks for all the help in shaping it. And we got it balanced out, and it was a pretty roaring success. I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, a lot more people are playing it, and the same reviews have gone up, so we're on the right track. So what are we doing now? Livy. Uh, if you see there, the Imperator Corner, if you haven't gone and done it yet, head over there after there and try it out. We have the mission system, which I really, really, really like. It's um, the combination between uh, Heart Shrine 4 National Focus Trees and uh, the EU4. I, I made a description earlier, and I can't remember exactly the cool phrase of that one. Um, but it's... I just love how there's like, they change all the time. They, you can pick the same conqueror mission for the same uh, region and you get another tree even with the same country. That's so cool. And how we're reducing the families to have only important great families in, uh, in a country. Uh, the reinforcement and food and attrition mechanics. Oh, I only have six minutes left. I could have talked about that forever. But I just love the thing that you actually have to have food on your units, moving about, uh, how, food, how re reinforcement only works in your own territory, how to have to move the supply trains. Yeah, it's so cool. Go and try it. And, you, and we're also adding a better UX so you can see the events. Because one of the things like that bugged me a little bit at launch was like, there's no events, there's no content. I'm like, 
The slightly mathematical nerd introvert in me went like, but we're more events than most games at launch, more than anything than CK2. And then, and then it struck me, a lot of them is the character events that interact. And we have no UX that actually showed the inter-character events. So they, if the player don't know about it, do it exist? No. So it's just stupid UX decision by me, hiding the living characters. We're getting a far better at that in uh, the Libby update, which will be released, I don't know the date, actually, it's later this year. Um, the, the marketing people will probably figure out when it's a good idea. And I'm hoping we have enough time for an open beta. But all in all, if you want to try it, try it there, talk to the team, and give us great feedback. Please help us. So what's the future? We want to make more and deeper content. We want to uh, create more mission trees for various countries. I, I, will, I will be happy when the, they make uh, overpowered missions for the Swedish tribes. Uh, might not be the priority for next weeks, but uh, yes, we should have. I want to have regular updates. I want to have uh, uh, big patches released regularly. Without breaking save games, there's no wood here. I need to. Oh, sorry. And we believe in this game. It's going to be a great future. And uh, I hope you will stay with us as we take Imperator into 2020 something future to be a really kick ass project that everyone will view as the best PDS game. Released, whatever. Yeah, well. <laughs> oh, well, thank you.